Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Today we're going to talk about the padlock process. Frank sent me a story. Thank you very much, Frank. And Frank said, you see this story out of Flint, Michigan. Now, I've mentioned Flint before. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in Michigan. I handle cases statewide. I've known quite a few people in Flint. In fact, I worked in Flint briefly as a disc jockey before I went to law school and then as a talk show host after law school. So I know Flint quite well. And uh, Flint, of course, is famous lately because they had the issue with the drinking water a couple years ago. And then before that, they were, of course, the star of the movie Roger and Me. Uh, Roger didn't really show up for the most part. And much of it took place in and around Flint, Michigan. So that's Flint, Michigan. But in the news now is what we call the padlock process, the padlock process. And this has happened up a couple times uh, both in Flint and elsewhere And uh, we're going to talk exactly what this is. NBC25news.com ran the story, and it's pouring rain outside. And my (laughs) cheat sheet here got hit with water, and everywhere it got hit with rain or water, uh, it's see-through. It's transparent, so it's going to make it difficult for me to follow along, but I'll do the best I can. Law enforcement right now is looking into taking action against a gas station which has been nicknamed Club Sunoco, Club Sunoco. And it's a gas station that's open 24 hours a day. And the neighbors have been complaining that a lot of uh, activity takes place there around the clock, including just large groups of people congregating there, congregating there. But there have also been fights and stuff and a lot of uh, videos showing up on, on, on the social media showing crazy stuff happening out there. And as a result of the complaints and all of the law enforcement calls, uh, the prosecutor of Genesee County, David Layton, now says he's working with the Flint Police Department uh, to send a warning to the owner of the Sunoco, which is located at Ballinger Highway and Flushing Road, that lawlessness will no longer be tolerated. Layton said, I spoke with Chief Green, and he and I agree we need to do something about the Sunoco gas station. The prosecutor says the uh, FPD is now gathering 911 data and police reports in the last few months to see if there's enough evidence to declare the infamous Club Sunoco a public nuisance. And if something gets dubbed a public nuisance, a court can order it to shut down or a court can order it to clean up its act or a court can do all kinds of stuff. But the public nuisance laws are often invoked uh, for buildings that are in disrepair. Uh, I've also seen it happen for other kinds of businesses. I'll tell you the famous story out of Royal Oak, Michigan in just a second. But here it's a gas station that's simply open around the clock and it does everything a gas station normally does. It sells gasoline. It's got overpriced stuff inside. And so it's a gas station. But the problem is the large groups of people just hanging out. And there have been other examples in Flint of party stores being shut down as public nuisances because so much bad stuff was happening in their parking lots. And for those of you outside of the Midwest, a party store is a convenience store. There's different nicknames for them around the country. But think of the 7-Eleven type stores or just the local community liquor store. Uh, Those are what we call party stores. And if the party's in the parking lot, you might have a problem. So um, in a statement, the chief confirms the partnership between his office and the prosecutors, uh, saying the department is looking to shut down any illegal activity. Now, since April of this year, uh, several videos have gone viral, circulating on Facebook and elsewhere, showing large groups of people fighting inside the gas station and in the parking lot by the pumps. Now, some people might say, Steve, why would the owner let this happen? Uh, I suspect it's one of those things that gradually escalated and just kind of crept and crept and further and further until it got to the point where the guy's like, what, what, what do I do? But the, the problem is that there's no question this stuff is happening out there. And like I said, neighbors and, and you know, other businesses nearby are, are complaining, saying this is, you know, it's, it's, it's like a blighted situation. It's something that, that needs to be corrected. So, um, as a public nuisance, if it was so declared, um, Leighton said, ultimately, we can shut the business down for a year. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that, but I think we need to get his attention, referring to the owner. I know Chief Green would like to see it closed by 11 at night, and that, of course, is part of the problem. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in a row, and um, the fact that that it's open late late means that there are people who are out that late going, well, where can we all go congregate? Where can we go hang out? Oh, Club Sunoco. (laughs) On Monday, Mid-Michigan Now talked exclusively to the owner, and he says he cannot close his business at 11 p.m. like they're suggesting. 
Now, you might say, well, Steve, maybe he gets a lot of business after 11 o'clock at night. No, it has nothing to do with revenue. He says, we can't close the building down because if we close the building down, I'll come back in the morning with nothing in your left. Windows or the building itself. So he's basically saying if he, if he leaves the building unattended, he's scared that the building's going to disappear or you know, get, get messed up. Mid-Michigan now talked to two people running for the 6th Ward Flint City Council seat about the situation. And of course, the 6th Ward is the ward in Flint where Club Sunoco is located. Uh, one of these uh, candidates is named Tanya Burns. She says she knows the owner of the gas station. And she says that this action has put him on high alert, high alert. So he's aware of a problem. He understands it's a problem. Now he's going to do something about it. That's what she says. Uh, she said something had to be done and it got his attention. Uh, she says she started working on a three-step plan with the owner to rectify wrongs in the community that include connecting his cameras directly to police headquarters. Now, the question is, do you think the police necessarily want to take on the task of watching this guy's security cameras 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I don't know. Maybe they do. Uh, I don't know if, if, if she's talked to police about that or not. Um, I'm not sure that that's typically something that a typical business can do and just say, hey, look, we're going to install cameras. You guys watch them. Um, but that's one of her steps in her three-step plan. Uh, she said he's contracted to get security at his business, high-tech security. He's agreed to have his cameras reinstalled with that system. So apparently he's got a system. It's not hooked up to police, and it's not high security or high tech yet, whatever that means. She said he's also agreed to be in compliance with all city ordinances. And I know some of you right now have already made a mental note to ask me at the end of the video, what's the gas station doing wrong? Are they actually breaking the law? And the problem is, I suspect, that there are laws against allowing large groups of people to loiter on your premises who aren't conducting business there. They probably aren't asking his permission, may we do this? But they're doing it. And so if he's allowing it, then that could be a problem. Don't know if you can hear that, but there is a thunderstorm rolling overhead right now that is straight out of Genesis, just to let you know. So if you heard that noise, <laughs> it's... <laughs> The people are bowling upstairs. At the same time, candidate Claudia Perkins says she's working with a friend who works at the Genesee County Sheriff's Office to get more patrols around the store. Uh, she said all this congregating creates havoc in the community. Uh, there are fights over there. It's just a cluster, and it's waiting for something to happen, said Claudia Perkins. Uh, and I like the way that they use the word cluster now um, as a shortened form of another word. And um, so I can say that. I just can't say the... <laughs> What she's probably thinking. Meanwhile, back the prosecutor, David Layton, says his office will have to review findings before seeking a public nuisance action. But if they get enough evidence of it, he said that he would then take it to the city council. And if approved, they would then file a lawsuit in Genesee County Circuit Court. And an action in Genesee County Circuit Court would be to seek you know, an injunction to shut the business down as a public nuisance. And that would be the padlock process I mentioned earlier. And so if your business or other thing you've got in a community is deemed a public nuisance, uh, they can shut it down. So the guy right now is at a crossroads. If he could solve these problems quickly, uh, he might not have any issues. But if he doesn't, then they might be proceeding ahead with this. Um, meanwhile, NBC25news.com says they're told the owner will be meeting with the current 6th Ward council person and block club presidents later on. So he, he's proactively doing stuff about this, uh, which is good, which is good. But the problem is that all this stuff is happening there. And we've seen these situations before where some spot just becomes popular for some reason. And, you know, when I was a high schooler, there was a stretch of Woodward Avenue that kids in the area would get in their cars and drive up and down, cruising as we called it. And there'd be a couple ice cream stands and so you'd go to an ice cream stand, you'd park your car someplace where other people could see it, and you'd go over and you'd buy ice cream for like a dollar, dollar fifty, whatever it was, and you go back and you lean on your car, and you eat your ice cream. But when you're done eating your ice cream, you didn't get in your car and go home, you hung out and waited for other people to show up and eat their ice cream. And occasionally you'd pop the hood in your car and show it to other people and vice versa. And so there'd be people hanging out, but... The interesting thing is that, that there was enough of these places scattered around that none of them got out of control. 
But you can imagine if they did, because where I was doing that, which was just uh, north of 14 Mile Road on Woodward on the uh, southbound side, uh, there was a fairly large parking lot. The point where that parking lot was never completely full. So no one could really complain and say, hey, you guys need to move on so other people can get in here. That never happened. That never happened. But we also weren't fighting or shooting music videos or any of that stuff. <laughs> so that was a, a different situation. But you can imagine how that could get out of hand in a particular area if enough people showed up. And quite frankly, I wonder, and, and I'm not going to try to find out, but I wonder how hard it is to go that Go to that gas station at 1 o'clock in the morning and get gas or midnight. Uh, I'm talking about the safety issues. In other words, if I were to pull in at midnight and get gas, as I pulled towards the gas station, would it look warm and inviting or would it look dangerous? Or would I go, oh, I, I should probably go someplace else, which makes you then wonder whether or not the guy should do more to keep this from happening. But I mentioned earlier that I've heard of other public nuisances being shut down. One of the most famous ones is right down the road from the ice cream store I just told you about, ice cream shop. And in Royal Oak, Michigan, there used to be a building on the uh, east side of the road, northbound Woodward, called, it was the Oriental Massage on the outside of the building. Ugly little building, just Oriental Massage. It looked like a just a bunker. Had no, no windows, or they had windows that were boarded up or shuttered or something. And Oriental Massage. And every few months something would happen that the Oriental Massage would pop up in the local newspapers where there'd be fights, uh, people calling the police and they got ripped off, uh, and the police were constantly being called there. And so occasionally, cops would walk in there undercover and say that they saw things happening which were illegal. And that happened a lot also. So there were a lot of arrests of people who worked at the Oriental Massage building. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Oriental Massage, in that context, is a euphemism. And the problem is that the employees of the Oriental Massage, many of them, were brought into the country specifically to work in that building. At least that's what it appeared. They were living in that building. I know at one point in time they executed a search warrant after being tipped off about this, and they found a shockingly large number of women uh, living in a little area inside that building. And they had like cots and hot plates and a little mini fridge and, and no documents. Uh, and they did not have the proper work papers to be doing what they were doing if such papers exist. And so eventually, after just more and more and more legal problems, somebody finally said, you know something, you guys got to take action on this. And they actually brought an action in Oakland County Circuit Court, had it declared a public nuisance, and in that case, the owner just walked away from it because there's nothing he could do or she could do to fix the problems that were so serious there to try to make it so it wasn't a public nuisance. And certainly to keep it running as a business that he'd been running, uh, it would have continued to be a public nuisance. And so shortly thereafter, they leveled the building and they put up a little tower with a clock on it. It says, welcome to Royal Oak. <laughs> so if you're ever headed northbound on Woodward Avenue, heading from Detroit up towards Oakland County, uh, into Oakland County. You'll see on the right-hand side a pleasant little park with a tower and a clock, Welcome to Royal Oak. And that's the site of the public nuisance that used to be the Oriental Massage. Uh, don't know what became of the young ladies who worked there. I suspect they may have gone back whence they came. Uh, but that's another story altogether. They were shut down as a public nuisance and this is all part of the padlock process. So we'll wait and see what happens to Club Sunoco in Flint. But um, something's going to happen. Either they're going to clean up their act or they're going to get shut down. And you'll notice the law says that they can be shut down for a year. So if they're shut down for a complete year, the guy would then have a year to straighten his act out as the owner of the business. So from NBC25news.com, that's law enforcement pursuing legal action to shut down Club Sunoco in Flint. Bria Jones wrote it. Frank sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Remember, the more you expect things to be a certain way, the more disappointed you'll be. Accept life as it is. You'll be free.